All right, welcome everybody to Sprouting 101. I am uh, Carolyn Nichols, Certified Holistic Nutritionist, and I'm really thrilled that you guys are with us today because um, I do want to go through with you the incredible benefits of sprouting, and I also want to share with you uh, on top of that, in addition to that, what we did in Cuba. We were talking about Cuba for so long. We went, we came back. Um, it was an incredible, incredible time. And um, uh, really, nutrition was uh, one of the main points. And so I want to share that with you. And so right now, I'm just going to share my screen here. Great. So the power of sprouting, this is so important. I would like to see a show of hands um, for people that do sprouting at home. So is there anybody you could just put a thumbs up if anybody does do sprouting already. So Sharda does sprouting, excellent. Uh, Queenie does some sprouting. Awesome, awesome. Anybody else does sprouting or has done sprouting? Maybe today I'll, I'll spark your interest to, to do some sprouting. Ali has done some sprouting or is doing sprouting. Okay, great. I think so. Erica has done or is doing sprouting. So that's good. So uh, it's not totally new to everybody. Um, but I hope to just shed a little bit more light on this um, concept of sprouting. And if you have any questions as I go, um, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Again, this is sprouting one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to go into deep, deep depth about it. I do want to just give you the basics. And I want to show you some sprouts also, which I think will be also very good and important. So the Power of Sprouting and Cuba Mission 2024. Uh, so welcome to that. So first of all, I just want to share with you the power of raw foods, because ultimately, that's what sprouting is. Um, however, uh, if they're cooked, they're not raw, but this is exactly what we're going to talk about right now, is that um, the, the power of raw foods, okay? So I'm going to explain to you um, some of the benefits and also some of the dangers, but the thing about raw foods is that um, generally, if you're having a lot of raw foods, your carrots, your lettuce, your salad, your cucumbers, you're getting at your fruits, um, even, your, even your nuts and seeds, you get a lot of fiber. Fiber is so important because although it's undigestible by human beings, that's actually a good thing because the fibers that come from raw foods, not the fibers that come from uh, necessarily our cooked food and especially our grains like wheat or oats, the kind of soluble fibers that you get from raw plants, fruits and vegetables are very sticky in the intestinal tract, which is so perfect because when it gets to that vagus nerve, that not vagus nerve, that portal nerve, um, that portal vein that uh, links the digestive tract to the liver, it pulls because it's so sticky, it pulls toxins. The other thing is that this kind of soluble, soluble fiber helps to create a very healthy microbiome of probiotics in the digestive tract. The other thing, of course, is it moves your bowels. So without the fiber, you don't have a good bowel movement. And I'm sure you know that healthy bowels are the sign of a healthy system. So raw foods having so much fiber are very, very important for the human body. Also, because they're not cooked, raw foods has a higher concentration of nutrition. Water soluble vitamins like vitamin C gets cooked out once it's heated. Iron doesn't get cooked out, calcium doesn't get cooked out. So you still can get some great nutrients even from your cooked food. However, raw foods, our raw nutrition, you get all, like, there's no heat involved. So that means that all the nutrients that you get in there are available to the human body. But we're going to talk about that with sprouting because that's something that's very, also, uh, there's a certain way. You could have a carrot and not get all the beta carotene because, because actually um, of the, uh, 
hard the amount of fiber that's in there. Um, and you know, carrots are extremely hard as well. Very, very fibrous and hard. So, um, but for the most part, you get a higher amount of nutrition from raw foods. Also, raw foods have enzymes, which is why if you cut an apple, it starts to grow, it starts to go brown. When you cut an apple, you open it, you expose it to the oxygen, it will start to go brown. It has a high amount of enzymes. That's because your food is alive. So raw food is a live food. And when food is alive, it has enzymes in it. And those enzymes are powerful. They actually help you digest. Um, they're building blocks for amino acids, which turn into proteins. So a raw food is extremely healthy because of the fiber, the higher nutrition, high amount of en enzymes, and raw food has a high water concentration. So, you know, your lettuce, your cucumber, your fruits, even your peppers, your tomatoes, these have a high, high concentration of water. If you cook a zucchini, it starts to spring water from it. A tomato starts to spring water. And as you're as you're pan frying it, you're trying to get the water to evaporate so you may not get, you know, so you don't have all this, this saucy stir fry. Um, but water, uh, raw foods have tons of water. So that's really good because your body requires a lot of water for the digestion process. So if I have a big salad before I have my chickpeas and rice, that chickpea and rice requires a lot of water to digest. Hydrochloric acid is mostly water. But when you have a salad first, now I have enzymes to help digest the rice and the, and the beans. And now I also have um, a lot of water in there, which means my body's not gonna take water from my blood system from my brain to digest this food. It has enough water in that raw food and it will use it at that time. It's amazing how the body works. Um, so with all of that being said, is that these are the four places that I want us to focus on right now when we are talking about sprouts, because sprouts, of course you can cook them, but the high concentration of nutrients is when you have them raw. So let's talk about the type of sprouts that you can have. Um, you can have plant seeds. So I am sure you have probably had alfalfa sprouts or broccoli sprouts. So these are seeds that would actually just be planted in a pot or in your garden. And out of that one broccoli seed, you would get a few heads of broccoli. So out of that alfalfa, it would grow a ton of alfalfa um, plants, mustard, mustard seeds, radishes. So you put a radish in the ground and you get a big bunch of radishes. Well, many people will sprout those vegetable seeds and a little bit actually goes a long way. But think about that for a minute. That one broccoli seed, if I put it in the earth, would probably give me about four heads of broccoli. So imagine the nutrition in that seed when you eat one, now when you eat 10, now when you eat 50, and it's really easy to eat 50 broccoli seeds because when they sprout, they're like together. Even if you ate 10, are you like eating 40 heads of broccoli and a little thing of you? you are, this is what I'm gonna show you, is that sprouting is so powerful, it's so powerful. You can also sprout your beans, you can sprout your chickpeas, you can sprout your mung beans, you can sprout your lentils, you can sprout your kidney beans, your black beans, so bean sprout. Anything raw, friends, anything unpasteurized can sprout. You can sprout your grains. If you have grains that are not pre-cooked, parboiled, you can, you can sprout your grains, your buckwheat, your quinoa, your millet. Grains are very difficult to sprout. They mold very quickly um, because of their high carbohydrate content. Um, but I'm sure you've heard of sprouted wheat, right? Um, so you can sprout grains. 
And what, what some companies do is they sprout the grains, then they dehydrate the grains, and then they turn those sprouted grains into flour. Now that, of course, um, it's claimed that it has a higher nutrient concentration, but I like to challenge that because you've heated those grains because um, they're not like a raw dehydration. So most of them are actually heated and then they're processed. So, but they definitely break down better in the body and I'll explain why. Um, however, you can sprout grains and they're extremely healthy, which we'll talk about it. You can also sprout your seeds, um, like your pumpkin seeds and your sunflower seeds. These are also sproutable. Now, different sprouts will give you different nutrition benefits, okay? But there is a process for sprouting. So here's the process is first you go through germination. So germination is just taking a seed and making it grow. So what happens is, is that seed breaks, okay? That seed breaks. And that process of germination is so powerful because what you're doing is you're breaking that hard outer shell. So this is what I was saying about carrots. Carrots are good, but they're really hard to digest. Kale is great, but raw, like carrots, it's very hard to digest. Broccoli healthy, but raw, it's really hard to digest because these things have a very hard outer shell. Almonds, very wonderful, but has a hard outside shell. And I'm talking about after you take it out of the shell, almonds have a very firm texture on the outside. So most of us don't chew well, um, but when you sprout your nuts, when you sprout your seeds, when you sprout your beans, you break through that outer shell in a very powerful way because it stayed raw. So you're getting all the nutrients of that bean, you're getting all the nutrients of that broccoli, but you're getting it from a seed, which one seed will grow into like four heads. And so what you're doing is you are getting the benefits of it, but because the outer layer gets broken, it's much easier to digest in the body, which we'll look at that. But here's the process is germination. And then when you sprout, there's a higher water concentration. You also get an increased amount of fiber because it's now growing and it grows through connected fibers. Um, you get a breakdown of carbohydrates because when a seed sprouts, you actually lose carbohydrates from the seed and it grows into fibers and enzymes in the sprout. So you actually reduce the amount of carbohydrate load. Um, the other thing too is that there's an increase of enzymes. So because that sprout is growing, it's, it's live. It is raw and live. So there's a huge increase of enzymes. And there's an, a, a massive amount of an increased amount of nutrition that becomes available also through sprouting. So you get an increase of nutrients, enzymes, a breakdown of carbohydrates, an increased fiber, water, and that germination softens the outer layer of the um, plant, making it easier to digest. So let's look at these nutrition packed benefits. So as I mentioned with germination, because it goes through germination, it's much easier to digest. And this kind of food, this kind of plant food is actually creates the prebiotics where, which are important for probiotics. A lot of people are talking about, oh, I need to buy prebiotics. I, you just need to eat more plants. The nutrition from plants, especially sprouts, have a lot of prebiotics in them which is the precursor for having probiotics and, um, and having a very healthy microbiome of the proper probiotics and healthy good bacteria is so important for digestion, your immune system, 80% of your immune system lies in your stomach gut and is absolutely dependent on your probiotic situation. 
um, your hormone balancing. These are just so important um, for, um, for basically every benefit of the human body for your body to absorb nutrients. You need some really good probiotics. So that germination process is a fantastic way to get healthy prebiotics. And because the outer shell has been broken and softened because it's sprouted, now it, this plant that you're eating is much easier for your body to digest. If it's easier to digest, that means your system gets more nutrients. Um, to sprout something, it requires a lot of water. You don't need soil. That's the amazing thing about sprouts. You don't even need light. In fact, sprouts are healthier in the dark. Uh, that is the absolute truth. So um, with that being said, is that um, there's a high water concentration, which means that that's much better for digestion and you will be more hydrated because when you eat more sprouts and you have more raw food, your body doesn't rob food from your blood system to get your digestive system going. There's enough water because you had sprouts there. So I'm not saying your body still doesn't require some extra water, but definitely um, there is a high water concentration. Um, so, and keep your questions coming. So I am going to um, definitely be answering them shortly. Now, um, fiber is very important. As I mentioned, the fiber that you get from sprouts and raw food is very sticky, soluble fiber. So this is very important because now you have better toxin removal. And now the fiber actually helps with the probiotic conversion. So now you're also getting that conversion to probiotics. You're getting toxins pulled out of the system. Uh, you're getting healthy bowel movements. So sprouts have a very uh, high amount of fiber in them, um, which is important for all this re all that all those reasons. Now, especially for those who might be fighting a blood sugar situation, too much glucose in the body, whether you're type one, one and a half, type two diabetic. And if you're listening and you know somebody who is a type two diabetic or is fighting diabetes or high blood sugar, please make sure they contact us because we have a no fail way to help people reduce their blood sugar naturally. But when you sprout your beans, so beans, just so everybody knows and understand, plants are carbohydrates. Some have higher carbs than others like Oats have a lot of carbohydrates where um, lettuce has a lower amount of carbohydrates, but everything is in itself a carbohydrate, every plant. Now beans have a very high amount of carbohydrates in them, but when you sprout them, the carbohydrates are broken down and it's converted to enzymes and fibers. So you actually have less carbohydrates from a bean when you sprout it than if you cooked it. You also have enzymes now, and I will explain to you that those enzymes actually turn into greater protein. So you get less glucose when you actually sprout, okay? And as we talked about, you get lots of enzymes. So your pancreas has to produce enzymes to digest your food. When you have a salad first, when you have sprouts first, then you have your cooked meal, your body doesn't need to produce that many enzymes because there's so much enzymes in your sprouts. And that means you get more energy because guess what? The manufacturing facility over at the pancreas now doesn't need so many workers, doesn't need so much energy to produce so many enzymes. Friends, I need you to, to really hear me, whether you're going to sprout or not. Have raw food before your cooked food. Have your fruits before your breakfast. Have your salad before your cooked meal. This is just a natural way to increase energy because when you give your body enzymes before you eat the cooked food, which has no enzymes, you are able to conserve more energy because you're using less to produce enzymes at your pancreas. I hope that makes sense. I must use the word enzyme like 50 times in that sentence, but 
Um, the benefits of raw before the cooked are so important. But that being said, now any kind of raw food, it does require a lot of work for the digestive system. So definitely there are some people that have um, a compromised digestive system where they can't even eat a salad. That really bothers them. Beans will send them through the roof. Um, they can't do that. Many people have compromised digestive systems can actually have sprouted beans um, as opposed to cooked beans, but it can still cause trouble for some people. So if you're having a lot of digestion issues, uh, this sprouting may not be for you. Uh, you'd have to talk to me personally and I'll show you at the end how you can get a consultation. Um, but um, for the most part, if you know your digestive system is working well, um, you should be able to enjoy the benefits of sprouting. So here's the beauty of sprouts and especially bean sprouts is that the enzymes that are coming in these bean sprouts convert in the system to amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks for protein. So if I have one mung bean, when I, if I eat that mung bean, I'm, I'm going to get probably 0 0.05 grams of protein, but that mung bean sprouted gives me almost six times more protein because it's sprouted. So what I'm saying to you is that I can have a half a cup of beans cooked and I might get 10, 12 grams of protein. I have that in sprouts and I'm getting almost six times the amount of proteins because of the live enzymes. This is extremely powerful. There's not a lot of protein in alfalfa sprouts, in broccoli sprouts, there's a high concentration of nutrition. So that's what I'm saying is that whatever the sprouting is, they have different benefits, but they have a lot of similar benefits. But just regular sprouts, just because they're raw, are, are not going to give you a high amount of protein, but bean sprouts give you a very high amount of protein. However, unfortunately, the sprouts that you see on the, in the market and at the grocery store, those bean sprouts, those white bean sprouts that we use for a lot of Asian cooking and stir fry, the way that they are cultivated are not giving you much benefits at all. You can buy alfalfa sprouts and broccoli sprouts, and those are generally cultivated, especially if you're buying organic, in a good way where they're high in nutrition. But I want to show you today how easy it is to sprout yourself, like really easy. And um, it was one of the key things that we used to teach the most impoverished people in Cuba how to stretch their food in a natural way. So... Um, just um, Amy Shapiro, uh, she's the founder and director of Real Nutrition. You can look her up. But this is, um, this is what she says. And um, I want to read this. I want to read this for you. She says, broccoli sprouts are about 50 times more powerful in cancer prevention than their mature counterpart. Broccoli offers an incredible amount of... Uh, Glucorphanine, the precursor to a compound um, called sulforaphane. Uh, new words for me. Shapiro also says that sulforaphane helps to activate and strengthen our body's natural cancer protection and helps decrease the chance of malignancy. So uh, very important, uh, like not even important, what a powerful figure. A broccoli sprout has 50 times more power than their mature counterpart. So I want you guys to hear and understand this. Uh, you know, many times we're saying that our food is so depleted of nutrients, you know, and, and that's true because our soils are depleted. Um, organic is definitely a better way to go, but, you know, our spinach and broccoli isn't what it was 10 20, 100, 600 years ago, no question about it. I don't still believe that the average person should be taking supplements, but understand that studies show that a broccoli seed has, a, a, a sprouted broccoli seed has 50 times more nutrition than if you put it in the ground and let it grow. 
Now the nutrition benefits of broccoli, there's gonna to be tons more calcium if you eat the physical broccoli. There'll be more iron if you eat the physical broccoli. So I'm not suggesting everybody gives up growing anything and letting it turn into a mature plant, but variety is the key. But what I'm hoping to really spark your interest and, and really encourage you to do is sprouting should be part of your regular daily diet. And you can do that. I can't grow broccoli in Canada year round, but I can sprout year round. And in the winter, nutrition gets low. And uh, I don't know about you, but the way this world is heading, I think I might be uh, hiding in a cave somewhere at some point in time. But uh, I'll tell you, I can grow sprouts in the dark with very, very little beans or broccoli seeds, enough to feed me for a week. And it costs so little. So this is what, like, I need your brains to start, you know, really churning this information because it's extremely, extremely powerful. Sprouting is powerful. So also, what I, want you, what I want you to understand is that bean sprouts contain a high level of protein at an average of five grams. Um, they are on the books, five grams per cup. But when you convert the amino acids, which convert into proteins, it's almost immeasurable. Um, but uh, it's almost, like I said, about six times more protein. So, um, th but this is extremely bioavailable protein. Why? Because as I mentioned with the germination process, you're breaking the fibers on the outside and um, it's, it's just so much easier to digest. When I'm eating a carrot, because it's so hard, it's so firm, the, the fibers are so hard, it's very hard for your body to truly take out all the beta carotene. In fact, it's much easier for you to, um, get the nutrients and the beta carotene from a carrot when it's cooked rather than when it's raw, to be honest. There are some things that I just, although I eat a very high, I eat a high raw diet, I don't eat a lot of raw carrots and raw cabbage and raw broccoli and raw cauliflower. These are cruciferous that are extremely hard to digest for the system. Those are better, those are better slightly steamed. Um, but uh, your lettuce, your cucumbers, your arugula, your sprouts, your radishes. These are, are great and easy for digestion. Now, um, bean sprouts contain um, protolytic enzymes, which make them easy to digest proteins and carbohydrates. But these digestive enzymes are readily available in sprouts instead of your body being forced to produce them. And when your body doesn't need to manufacture these enzymes, it can focus on making more essential enzymes that are critical to tasks like fighting all off diseases. Um, now, bean sprouts also contain a high amount of oxidant, uh, antioxidants like flavonoids, um, phenolic acids and organic acids. These are cancer fighting antioxidants, friends, and they're found in very, very, very simple bean sprouts. Um, so it, it's a high concentration of nutrition. Now, um, let me see, I'm gonna just jump in here to show you some of the bean sprouts. So I want to talk to you about the process of bean sprouts and how to do it. And I'm going to see if I can, um, I'm going to see if I can show you. Now there's a couple different ways to do sprouting. All right, see if I can find myself. All right, so what I wanna show you first of all is um, sprouting. Recording in progress. No, it's not. that's fine. So I'm gonna show you first of all what I'm using, what I'm using for sprouting. 
And I've also done some sprouting here. So I want to show you guys how simple it is for you to do it. Okay. So first of all, I have just some simple mung beans. We'll get it and we'll get the camera on it. What are they called? So these are mung beans. I'm gonna mung fix Mung beans. It. Yes, mung beans. M-U-N-G? M-U-N-G beans. And just adjusting the camera here so that you guys can see it. Give me one second. All right. So with the bean sprouts, strange that it's not coming in. So let me actually I'm just going to fix the camera here so that you guys are able to see. what it looks like. Give me one second. I'm going to show you guys also how to actually do the sprouting. Okay, great. Recording in progress. Be patient with me for a second. All right, so I'm just going to. All right, can you guys, you can see that, but you can also hear me, one sec. All right, so can you guys, I'm not sure, you guys are hearing an echo? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, so can you guys see these uh, mung bean sprouts here? These are the mung beans, not the sprouts, okay? And uh, the, this is what I'm using for these sprouts. But you can use lentils, you can use chickpeas. The reason why I like mung beans is because when they do sprout, they're not huge. When you sprout a chickpea, um, the bean always does get a little bit smaller, but it's it's still almost the size of the chickpea. And for me, um, I that that's not enjoyable for me and for my palate. That's that's but it might be for you. Um, so with that being said, is that um, you can choose and you can, you know, you can choose whichever bean you like. I like mung beans and I like lentils because mung beans and lentils uh, tend to uh, just be a little bit smaller and uh, easier to chew. Now, what you're going to want to do is 
what you're going to want to do is first of all is just get a jar okay so here i have this jar and you could just use a mason jar and what you're going to do is you're just going to take two tablespoons of your beans you're going to soak them overnight for 24 hours okay and then you are going to um take off all the water. So you soak them overnight for 24 over overnight or for 24 hours. It's up to you. Um, but really it needs about eight hours for sure. So before you go to bed, you can just put it in water and in the morning. So it needs about 12 hours. And in the morning, you're going to just take off all the water. You're going to put it in a jar and you just take your jar and all you need to do is find a lid or something, but you just want to elevate it a little bit. And at the front of the jar, what you're going to do is you're going to cover the front of the jar with a nylon stocking, okay? So that's what will happen. And you can see these bean sprouts here. Um, they are, they're sprouting already and they're edible. But if I leave this any longer um, for a couple more days, this will be full of them. But as you can see, the seed has broken open. The skin has come off as well. And that is actually, the skin's a little bit hard to digest. So this sprout, you eat the bean and you eat the sprout. And when you do that, you get tons of these protolytic enzymes. It's incredible. Um, but what's happening here uh, is that this is like the third day. You want to let it go for about four or five days. And then this jar will be just full of sprouts. But every day, this is what you're going to do. Obviously, it doesn't need soil, but it needs water. So every day, you are going to take your sprouts, and you're just going to wet them. I'm going to pour water on top of them, and then I'm just going to drain them out. So I take my jar. I'm going to pour, pour some water in it. Pour some water to cover. Okay, and I'm just going to let water go on there. This will be full of water. And then I'm just going to dump out all the water and let it sit. And what will happen is they're just wet. That's all they need to be is just wet. And twice a day, you are just wetting your sprouts. That's all you're doing is just wetting your sprouts. And because there's a little bit of moisture on them, it cracks them and they begin to grow. They need dark and not sunlight actually. So it's better that you keep this in a cover cupboard and just put a mesh, a nylon stocking and elastic over the top. Now you can get a little fancy and you can buy a sprouting jar. It'll have a plastic top with holes in it and I'll have a little crutch on it so that it can, you know, be elevated a little bit. Um, but that's all you're going to do is twice a day, you're just going to wet it and, and dr drain off the water. In the afternoon or evening, you're going to wet it and drain off the water. And if it wasn't draining right and it's still a little bit wet, don't wet it again. Twice a day is not the rule. It's just generally what they need. Now, I'm going to move over to this here. And you're going to see that I actually have a sprouter as well. So this is my sprouter. Um, I got this at a health food store years ago. And um, with this sprouter, this bottom part here, this holds water. And here I have little holes at the bottom and you can see the water dripping from it. So all I do is I pour the water into the top one. And as I pour the water into the top one, then the water fills this first one and it keeps flowing down through the rest of them. This, when I use this sprouter, I don't need to um, soak them overnight. Okay, so when I'm using this sprouter, no need to soak overnight. And they grow, you can get some that are much bigger. You can get some with two or three layers. I've seen some with five layers. Um, but whatever you're doing, this is another easy, this one years ago cost me about $30. Um, but whether it's broccoli sprouts, whether it's um, radish sprouts, it's so simple. You just wet them and drain them twice a day. It's very simple. And like, honestly, friends, like look at all the nutrition. So um, it, it's extremely simple. I'm going to just join here. Recording in progress. 
Can you get you guys? Can, yes. Okay, so that's basically how the sprouts are done. I'm just gonna get this camera back up here. So that's basically how how you how you make the sprouts. Now um, the thing is, is that when you're doing the sprouts, uh, variety is important. I mean, you can do some mung beans, you can do some lentils but you want to sprout them you want to sprout them for about four days five days is good but four days is fine and after you sprouted them now you want to put them into um now you want to put them into your refrigerator and they keep in the refrigerator for only about five days uh and once if they get slimy or they have any smell to it then definitely um, they're not good anymore. Um, so just a couple more things I'm gonna mention and then I'm gonna take the questions that are in the chat. So the other thing that uh, is just the dangers of sprouting. When you're using these sprouting containers, especially if you've got sprouts um, that uh, you've, you've got sprouts like broccoli sprouts or radish sprouts, they're very easy to mold. So you have to be careful because that's dangerous mold. That's not healthy mold. There is such a good thing of good mold, but that's not it. So that's why even the raw mung bean sprouts that you buy at the store, like there's always issues with them. Um, but once you cook them, they're not a problem. So yes, to avoid the whole mold situation, you can cook your sprouts, but then unfortunately you lose the benefits of the raw enzymes and um, many of the benefits of the nutrients that get cooked out. So still wonderful and still good for you, but uh, not as good as raw sprouts. Uh, so that's uh, one understanding there. And like I said, if you've got a sprouter and you're doing something that creates dense sprouts, like the broccoli ones or the radish ones or the mustard ones, you need to make sure that there is no mold because then that's super dangerous. Alfalfa is also very dense. Um, these ones you can, you can see very clearly. Always make sure that they're covered, but there's air coming into them. Fruit flies love sprouts <laughs> for some reason. So if they're not covered, uh, you, could have, you could have a whole family of fruit flies in there. And then unfortunately, it's, it's wasted. The other thing is that you need fresh water. Um, you know, when we were in Cuba, they said they had a water filter, but my sprouts, the water coming out of my sprouts uh, was not the same. We sprouted when we were in Cuba because I was showing them how to do it. I still ate my sprouts, but I could tell that this water was not super clean. So whenever you can, you want, to, um, you want to make sure that you're using clean and purified water. Now, the other thing that I had showed you, I showed you with the sprouts and you saw the green skin starting to come off. When my sprouts are ready, and this is only for bean sprouts, not for alfalfa sprouts or broccoli sprouts, but for bean sprouts, when my sprouts are ready, I put them inside a bowl and I cover it with purified water and all the skins float to the top. And then I just skim off all this, I skim off all the skins, I mix it around again, more skins float to the top, I take it out and then I drain them and I leave them in a colander for just a couple hours so that they get really, you know, dry. Then I refrigerate them and I find that they refrigerate, they keep much longer when I've taken the skins out and I've let them dry a little bit. But you can eat the skins, it's not a problem and there's good nutrition in it. They're just a little harder to digest and not as enjoyable. Um, but most of the time I, I don't have the time to always rinse them, but you don't have to rinse them before you use them, that's your choice. They have some good, back, they have some bacteria in them but friends, it's good bacteria. Um, we have, especially through COVID, we've become too clean and our immune systems are in trouble because we want to disinfect everything, including the good bacteria that helps our immune system get strong. Um, uh, just a, a final word about sprouting is that 
um, just to, to give you my, to give you my, the history of what happened even with myself is that uh, I went through a period maybe about um, quite a while ago, uh, maybe about six years ago, where um, I had done a really long fast. And I know some have, have heard this story, but I did a really long fast for like 10 days, felt amazing. Um, and then, you know, I did five days of raw. Well, I was very shorthanded at the store that month. And it was just like, I was doing fruits for breakfast, salad for lunch, and that was it. And, and I kept doing that, or many times it was salad for breakfast and just fruits or a fruit smoothie in the afternoon. But my energy was like through the roof, um, just so much energy. I was, it was incredible, but I wasn't having my cooked meal after my salad. I wasn't having any kind of breakfast after my fruits. Um, but anyway, I was planning just to do a raw for just five days, but five days turned into 30 days because I was just too busy to have more than a salad at lunch and more than fruits um, for my breakfast. So anyway, after that being said, is that I ended up, you know, things slowed down maybe a month and a half later. Uh, I went and I'm just like, uh, you know, we get the delectable meals um, to our store. We also make soups and stuff. And I'm just like, listen, I'm sitting down to a mung bean soup for those who remember Energy Shack soups, which I hope will be coming back soon. Uh, you know, that's just, it's just so divine that soup. But anyway, I had, um, I had the mung bean soup after I had my salad and my energy went from like 10 to two. I'm like, what's happening here? Anyway, the next day I thought nothing of it. I had my salad and had one of the delectable vegan gluten-free lasagnas. And I just had a small slice of that. And the same thing happened. I had so much energy. And then I was just like drained. I was dropped. I was just like, I have to go to sleep. What's wrong with me? So, you know, looking it up and just reading through a lot of my research papers, I realized that I had gone so long on raw food that my, my enzymes were not being created by my pancreas as much as I, it just didn't need to create so many enzymes because I was eating food loaded with enzymes. And now out of nowhere, I just forced my manufacturing facility in my pancreas to start creating enzymes that they hadn't made in like more, almost two months. And it was just like, whoa, this takes a lot of work. Okay, pull this nutrient and that nutrient in, and hurry up and get her the enzymes because the lasagna is coming in now. Um, so with that being said, is that I didn't like that feeling. And after a couple of days of eating cooked food, I thought, you know what? I think I'm just going back to a mostly raw diet. But what happened is I started working out with a personal trainer. And after a year of working out with him, I'm like, you know what, can I get an assessment? How am I doing? Because I, you know, I think I'm going to go out on my own now. And he's like, Carolyn, you are like, have more energy than Energizer Bunny. You're almost 50 years old and I've never seen anybody like you. You can keep doing, you know, push-ups forever and jumping jacks forever and burpees forever. Like you don't get exhausted and you're never sore. But here's the problem. We're at the same weight we started a year ago. You're also not getting stronger. I'm like, you know what? You're right. That's strange. So I'm, I realized that my protein intake was so low being on a raw food diet. And I was reminded about sprouting. God just put that in my head, like, get back to sprouting. So I started sprouting my mung beans. Do you know in two weeks, I went from just doing bicep curls with 10 pounds because that's all I could do. I wasn't strong. And I picked it up to 17 pounds in two weeks easily. I was like, it was incredible. My strength was incredible. So I stayed on my mostly raw diet, but I started adding sprouts. I'm telling you, it's Popeye food. It's like, it's so, it makes you so strong. There's so much protein in sprouts. Now I'm not recommending that everybody here listening moves to a raw food diet. That's not what I'm suggesting. But what I am saying is that um, there is a ton of nutrients and a ton of protein in sprouting that most of the population is missing. And since our soil is so depleted, since our food can't be perfectly trusted with all this genetic modification, sprouting is so easy. And these kind of sprouts that you saw in my sprouting container was like, just a few tablespoons on each of the trays. Like if I cook that, I wouldn't be enough for a meal, but this is going to be enough sprouts for like 
my, my, me, my husband for the entire week once it's finished. So it's very economical and very affordable. So um, I see your questions and I love that you have them. Um, so, but with that being said, I'm going to answer a few of your questions, but I'm also going to turn back to our PowerPoint because I want to show you something really incredible and wonderful. So, Our Cuba mission trip. I'm going to answer a few of your spreading questions and then I just want to show you this slideshow of what we did in Cuba because it was so incredible and I hope you can see it but you guys have some great questions so do I have any tips for avoiding the mold? Um, just make sure that when they're that your sprouter is number one that it's clean um, and number two um, make sure that um, you are shaking it, shaking up your sprouter, making sure this, this, the sprouts separate and don't overpile them. That's where the mold comes in a lot and make sure they're in a cool place. So if you don't have AC on in your house, you can grow them in the fridge. It takes a lot longer, but you need them in a cool place. If they're too warm, that's when um, mold can also happen. Um, so is it in better? It is, uh, you can rinse the sprouts. You will get some of the healthy bacteria off them, um, but you'll also get some of the bad bacteria off them. So that's up to you. And drying them in a salad spinner is great. My salad spinner wouldn't hold them because there's too many, the, 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 the mesh isn't um, close enough. There are two wide slots in there. Um, so, but yes, you can also put them in a salad spinner. Now, um, when buying your seeds or beans, how long can they last and still be good to sprout? I so I got it. Okay, so I haven't had any issues with. Um, by the way, there were two questions in there that have disappeared from the chat. I think because I looked at them and I shouldn't have. But um, Sam asked if we can use sprouts instead of salad. No, my friend, you still have to eat your salad, but. Put lots of sprouts on your salad. Um, but I feel like um, maybe Alice had a question or somebody right before Sam. So if I'm not answering your question, just throw it back in the chat. Um, so generally your beans are good for a couple of years, but for sure, if they get stale, um, they're not going to be good for sprouting. But generally beans are, are good for a couple of years. And you know, friends, you can just take your bean, one bean, and put it in your garden. And it turns into a whole bean with a hundred beans in them full of bean pods. Like you can, I just take my kidney beans every year and I stick them in all like six places at the edge of the garden. And by the time this, the harvest season comes, I have a huge bean plant with all these bean pods. And I have like hundreds of beans that I can sprout or regrow or cook if I want to. Beans are such, and that's what you're going to see in this video. Beans are so inexpensive. They're packed with nutrition. They're loaded with fiber. Yes, they have high carbohydrates to them. If you sprout them, they have less. But beans are just like, to me, they are the wonder superfood of the world. And God made it so that there's such a variety of beans. You have red, you have black, you have green, you have yellow. Now, there are some people that can't digest beans because of their digestion issue. So you can try sprouting or talk to me so we can, we can heal your digestion issue. Um, but before I let you guys go, I just want to share this slide with you. So there was music attached, but I don't know if it's going to show. So I'll just talk through it. Um, we had 70 people to feed for our training of the local Cubans. And um, we went to the market. And so this is their market. They don't have regular grocery stores. Everything's outdoors. And uh, when you're buying your beans, you're taking them home and you are taking out the stones and the everything in it. Um, so the, the Cuban market was really incredible. 
um, every vendor, you know, bartering um, everything. But when we went shopping, we were cooking for 70. So I didn't buy like five sweet potatoes. I had to buy a bag of them and we didn't plan properly. So we're carrying around 20 pineapples and a big bag of potatoes. So it was very exhausting, but um, incredibly fun uh, at the end of it. Um, so the group of 13 of us that went, and some of them are here and I will introduce them to you, but the group of 13 of us that went, we stayed at a resort so that we wouldn't have to, uh, first of all, for those that don't even know anything about our Cuba mission trip, on July 12th, uh, a group of 13 of us, uh, Energy Shack and some volunteers, went to Cuba for a mission. We were invited by the Seventh-day Adventist Conference in Cuba, who said there was a real need to understand health. So I decided to open that up to Energy Shack audience and um, 13 people answered the call and we went down to Cuba. Um, now, we also asked for donations because as you know, Cuba is a very impoverished country. I, I think not by choice of the people, but by choice of the government. Um, and even things like toothbrushes, they don't have. Uh, very, very hard to get. We brought down, no kidding, 13 extra suitcases loaded with clothes and games, puzzles for the kids and toothbrush and toothpaste and laptops and cell phones and eyeglasses and deodorants and shampoo. I mean, people were so generous and many of them are you guys listening. And I just want to thank you. We I feel so bad. I don't know how it happened, but I brought back one belt, men's belt. Ah, I wish I could send it back to Cuba, but they don't even, the men don't even have belts for their pants. Um, but except that one belt, everything was brought down, clean underwear, socks, everything. So the government is a little leery of mission trips because they don't like the religious aspect. So what we did is packed up those suitcases. We got ourselves religious visas um, so if anybody asked us questions and uh, in the daytime, we trained the people at the church on how to do these natural remedies. And in the evening, we did an evangelistic series um, of teaching them about God. And we took two days where we, after we did the training, we actually went into the villages to the poor of the poor and showed them how to sprout show them, you know, if they have digestion issues, they didn't even know that they could use the aloe vera that was in their backyard to heal their stomach. So we were showing them with what they already had in their own home, how they can heal their diabetes, their arthritis, their kidney infections, their digestion issues. It was powerful. So the staff stayed here. We almost never saw the, oops, sorry. We almost never saw the resort um, because it was, I apologize, I don't know if I can make this go faster. Um, we almost never saw the resort because we left at eight in the morning and we came back at 9.30 at night. It was a long day in the mission field every day, but nobody complained. These 13 people that we brought down were incredible and worked very hard to um, feed everybody there in Cuba. So this was the beach that we got to just put our toe in and leave one day, uh, Friday before the flight. Um, that was pretty much uh, the day, the only day that we got to actually be at the resort. And the thing is, though, is that they use a lot of oil, cheese and seafood. Uh, so they had to customize a few meals. This was one of our transportations. Transportation is so difficult there. Um, we also this is the church that we spent most of the time at. They have a water purification system that they open up to the entire community. And that water purification system is donated from another church in the US. And they make sure there's always clean water at that church. So I had an interpreter and um, I explained the eight laws of health. We went through how to reverse diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol. Uh, what a picture. <laughs> Um, and like I said, there was about 70 people asked lots of questions. I was telling them to just eat two meals a day um, and to, you know, they eat a lot of rice, a lot of sugar, a lot of corn. 
Uh, and this was one of our um, Yafet. He was one of our speakers for the evening. This is another interpreter. We had an Energy Shack team in their hot, unconditioned kitchen making all the food for the 70 people. Um, it was really incredible. They don't have a regular stove. They just use like a propane stove, <laughs> Yvonne. Uh, they just use a propane stove and um, uh, no oven. Uh, there wasn't even enough room for all these 70 people to eat. So some people had to sit in the conference outside to eat, but nobody was complaining. They were shocked that the meals they ate, we cooked it without oil. They use oil in everything. Everything is glistening. And they couldn't believe how tasty the food was. And we added extra fiber to it through the lettuce and the cucumbers. And when they came for training on the Monday, um, when they came for training on the Monday, it was really incredible because what happened was they were like, oh, we can't just eat twice a day. We can't eat a big breakfast and a good lunch. You don't know, you know, my doctor's telling me eat six times a day. You don't know we can't get a lot of food in Cuba. I'm like, listen, I went to your market. I looked at the price of chicken and rice and beans and beans, my friend, are the cheapest. So you can afford this way of eating. Uh, maybe you don't have that knowledge. So when we gave them this meal, the next day, when these 70 people came back for training, I said, who ate dinner? After that lunch we gave you, who ate dinner? Two people of the 70 raised their hand and they said they didn't even want it. They don't know why they ate it. Nobody ate dinner because we gave them so much fiber and such a substantial meal at lunchtime with so little rice. You can't get brown rice there. We had to give them white rice, but it was so little, but they're used to this much rice, this much bread with a little bit of beans and no cucumbers, no lettuce. And cucumbers were rather inexpensive there. So they were shocked pleasantly surprised and we got a whole lot less complaints the next day so in the evening um, I spoke once but mostly we had other speakers in the evening we did an evangelistic series the kids came out the adults came out everybody from the community and we spoke in three different churches every night and there was a baptism and um, a lot of altar calls, a lot of people, their lives were changed and many people gave their life to God and were baptized, not just with our efforts. Um, they had been doing Bible studies um, for uh, many months, even before, but you can see the, the Cuban people, they have cell phones, even the poorest of poor because of such donations um, that they get. But one thing that you'll see um, is that um, we, we also, by the way, showed them how to use garlic and uh, they can get a lot of charcoal. They make it themselves with coconut um, and how to make a ginger poultice. Ginger, garlic and onion are available to them and they had no idea it could be used to reduce inflammation, take their knee pain away. Uh, it was incredible. They have aloe growing everywhere and they had no idea they can use aloe to get rid of the ulcers on their skins, the spots on their face and to eat it if they have digestion issues. So then we took two days where we took all of the supplies and the people in the church of Cuba knew this is one of the ladies at the church. They know who needs what and where to go in the villages. So they took the 11 suitcases and started dividing it up of you know where we're gonna go and what we're gonna give. And so we went into the people's homes. Now, this is where one of the church started. We've been working with three churches and this was their structure. Here's Wanda. We divided up in groups. Uh, three different vehicles went out and we actually went on the ground and showed people how to use these poultices, how to make these poultices. And we didn't have to bring them the supplies. Even the poorest of poor had some garlic in the kitchen, had some onions in the kitchen. They, for some reason, they're missing the connection of knowledge of their environment and natural remedies. When I go to Jamaica, they're telling me that this plant is good for this, this plant is good for this, this plant is good for this. Cuba doesn't know. They did not know that they had all these remedies in their backyard. It's crazy. They're definitely living, uh, you know, this was a hole where they were getting just their water from. I mean, we went to the poor of poor. The vehicles wouldn't even go there. We had to walk most of the time and carry all the donations, which is fine. But this is how they're living. But they were so happy that we brought the donations. But if you see around them, they have so many greenery. They have so many of these remedies growing in their backyard. And for some reason, 
The information is not there to know how to use it. They're living off rice, white bread, um, dairy milk, and um, very little beans. So we went house to house. I'm a nutritionist. We had an interpreter. What's your health issue? Carolyn would like to help you. Wanda would like to help you. We put a charcoal poultice on this lady. She has a brain tumor and they cannot get medication here in Cuba. So the medication is very hard to get. So people are literally dying from diabetes and high blood pressure because the medication is hard to get and expensive. And so we went in there to show, well, you don't have to have diabetes because if you eat like this and sprout your beans and, you know, one lady, we said, do you have any beans here? And she said, I only have a half a cup. Like she was saving it. And I'm like, just give me two tablespoons and now you can eat all week. You know, if she cooked that half a cup, she wouldn't even be able to feed her family. So we were showing them the benefits of sprouting. I said, do you have a glass jar? And everybody had a glass jar. Um, this is one lady, she, she was definitely not as impoverished as the other, but she's been spending 10 years taking care of her mom. And so she wasn't well. And we showed her how she can heal her thyroid. And this was her precious 90 year old mom. She was so cute. Um, but her mom had a terrible kidney disorder and bladder infection, and she was sweating profusely because her kidneys couldn't get rid of the water. Um, so we showed very simple remedies that she can do with just some coconut oil with some aloe and garlic. Um, this little boy had never seen an apple in his life. We gave him an apple and he was the happiest kid, but he took a bite and didn't like it. It's so funny. Um, this lady had, it, it's crazy. She had all these open ulcers on her. They, everyone was uh, mandated to take the vaccine in Cuba. And as soon as she did, she got all these ulcers all over her leg, but she had aloe in her backyard and had no idea just putting the aloe would heal up all these ulcers. And it's, it's just wild to me that that disconnect is happening in such a Caribbean country that has very fertile land. Um, so we were, we were able to help them just teaching them a lot of bad coughs. They're getting very sick from um, the mosquito bites and their immune system is dropping. Um, so we were just showing them to do hot and cold therapy on their chest and their coughs were going away. So it was really, really simple things. Um, very, very simple things. I mean, look at this land. It's so fertile and they had no idea they can take a bean and grow it. But this just shows some of the houses that we went into. The lady here had very bad diabetes, but I taught her how to sprout and um, I told share, share it with your friends. We brought the beans to her so she wouldn't have to use her own beans. Um, but we just went house to house and just tried, what is your health issue? Here's a remedy from your own garden. Um, we left them with pesos. We left them with donations and uh, we prayed with them. Uh, it was incredible. And uh, we were all saying that we would love, we would love, love, love to just have stayed another six weeks, just going house to house. Uh, this is a very special family, and I want you to pray for Oscar. That's the gentleman there. Um, she has a very bad kidney infection. Her doctor gave her antibiotics, but she really just needed to, she's addicted to sugar. And so at the food bank, they give you pop, bread, rice, um, and, and that's what they've been eating. But look at their home. They have coconuts, they have mangoes, they had tons of garlic. They had no idea that of course, they're eating their mangoes and their coconut, but she has a kidney disorder and didn't know that she shouldn't be eating all that coconut. Um, and this poor gentleman was so addicted to, to, to alcohol that he was robbing his family of the very little money that they had. And he said, please help me. My mind is so weak. So we left him with some charcoal and he's going right now through his withdrawal and taking the charcoal and overcoming his alcohol addiction. Um, so some just really powerful help and we prayed for them and with them and the man just bawled his eyes out his wife was crying and we just um, yeah we just uh, really are believing that this family will be rescued from their addiction so this is our last day at the resort and we couldn't find transportation back to the hotel and then someone someone calls us and says hey we got two vehicles if you can if you can spare a hundred dollars 
And uh, those two very, very cool cars came to pick us up. All the cars there, it's like you've got you, time paused in 1955. Um, but anyway, this is the pastor that invited us and his wife, and they met us at the airport before we left, and they were just so, so grateful for um, everything we did there. And, um, and I'll tell you that uh, it was transformation for all of us, not just for um, this family, but it was great to be on the front lines and, um, and help them. And, you know, uh, we parted from Cuba just wishing that we could have stayed like another six weeks because we just want to, we want to, we, I want to go back now to all the homes there. And did you use the aloe? Did you take the garlic? How's your kidney infection? So our plans now, um, um, our plans now are to um, create a network of people um, from the Cuba church that are going to get trained by us and follow up um, with, you know, the house with the houses that we visited. And we are creating a not-for-profit organization so that um, people can donate to this cause. Uh, it's not just Cuba, but we have a lot of mission work planned and uh, we want to keep going back there. And, uh, Cuba is not a place you visit. Uh, it's a place you, uh, your heart connects to because there's so much oppression. There was no electricity for anywhere from two to four hours every day. The water would stop every day. You couldn't get transportation back to the hotel because they ran out of gas. Uh, it's just crazy that there's such a lack of resources in a Caribbean country when every other Caribbean country around them has those resources. So there's just a lot of criminal um, activity happening on a government level that keeps the Cuban people very, very oppressed. That pastor you saw in the picture has a salary of less than $35 US a month, a month. Where do you go with that? Where do you go with that? So they give him a house to live in, which is practically a shack. And, you know, so he doesn't have to pay rent, but, and they pay some of his utilities, but not all of it, but $35 a month. Like you can't even buy food for your family and has three grown boys uh, and his wife that he has to feed, get transportation and his vehicle broke down. He wanted to come and pick us up and he couldn't even afford to fix his vehicle. There's no, when I said to him, I guess that doesn't leave room for savings. He said, savings, what is that? What is savings? So um, it was great to be able to be there and actually pay the people for interpreting. And we paid them the US um, fees. We didn't pay them, you know, $2 for interpreting. We gave the interpreters um, good money for, for being there with us, more than $50 US a day. Um, we made sure that we paid everybody fairly what I would pay somebody if you were in Canada. And um, we made sure we gave the pastor a brand new laptop. Thank you for the donations because they are in desperate need of electronics so they can stay connected. Uh, so friends, it was awesome. I know we're past 830, um, but I just wanted to share this information with you. Um, back to sprouting or if you're struggling with any health issue, um, all right, my consultations for a full one is $110. And if you let me know in the next 48 hours that you would like a consultation. If you're struggling with a health issue, it is just $49. Pass that to your friends. I would just love to help um, you not suffer because we've been so blessed to learn how to heal almost any health issue naturally. I also want to let you know that we have retreats coming up, a one day retreat in August and a four and seven day in November. If you need help, Come and learn, learn how to cook, learn how to do the natural remedies. Let us equip you um, while we're also letting you enjoy, you know, saunas and hot tubs and cold plunges and all of that stuff. And if you're not already following us, make sure you do on Instagram. So um, grains and beans have phytic acid and hence we are cursed to so yes, or slow cook them to get rid of. Um, so it definitely reduces the phytic acid. That's a very good question, Alice. Huh? Reduces the phytic acid. It doesn't totally eliminate it, but it definitely drastically reduces it. 
Um, and can you sprout peas? You can sprout peas that are dried peas and um, they can't be split peas. As soon as it's split, you cannot sprout them. Um, but generally peas should be able to, um, should be able to sprout. And um, I think that's it for, I think that's it for questions. Anybody else have any comments? And um, I know we have some of our, um, some of our possibly, anybody from our Cuba team missionary that would like to unmute and say anything about the trip as a final word before we close this meeting? One thing that I will tell you, I'll go ahead, Alice. Um, yes, I don't know if you can see me. I was honored to be part of the group. And um, it was very humbling, especially seeing that um, the Cubans have big hearts. They're kissing, they're hugging, they're happy, even with the little that they have. Yes. So they're very, very, very kind. And um, yeah, I thank God for the opportunity. Yes, and I have to tell you that um, I was told before I left to expect the unexpected in Cuba. And so I went in with no expectations. But this group of 13, well, there's 14 of us. One, yes, there was 13 of us in total. Um, but um, wow, what a group of individuals. So, uh, you know, it's just, I kept changing the plans every day because it was expect the unexpected and everyone just rolled with the punches and worked 12, 14 hour days in the heat, no air condition. And they, nobody complained. They were happy to do it and wake up the next morning and do it again. So I'm very, very grateful for the team that we had and everybody played their part. And um, if you would like to um, be a part of the Cuba mission trip, or if you would like to, um, if you would like to make donations to the not-for-profit organization so that we can keep going back to Cuba because that is the plan, or if you'd like to join us on one of our Cuban trips, definitely get in touch with us um, because uh, we are definitely going to be making this um, a regular part, a regular part of what we do at the Energy Shack. But I'm telling you, our retreats are amazing. Our workshops are amazing and definitely get into that free consultation. Um, so if you would like to buy broccoli sprouts, radish sprouts, um, or anything else, like any of those kinds of sprouts, you can generally get them at the health food store. But honestly, if you buy just organic seeds that you're going to plant in the ground, you can sprout those. Yeah, but if you want sprouting, you want a big, bigger package of sprouting seeds, uh, just go to your local health food store. I know Healthy Planet has them. Nature's Emporium has them. You can get them probably on Amazon online somewhere, but um, you can also just pick up some mung beans or lentils like I have here and just sprout them. So easy. Two tablespoons is all you need. Family, it's been a blessing and thanks for entertaining uh, me for so long. Uh, I hope that... Um, I really hope that uh, you can somehow get connected with the Energy Shack. Uh, follow us on Instagram, The Energy Shack Juice Bar, not regular Energy Shack, but The Energy Shack Juice Bar. Um, but if you have any questions about sprouting, about a consultation, or maybe you just have a question about a health issue, just, just email info at energyshackjuicebar.com. Uh, and that's what and I'm gonna yeah. just make sure. Yeah. I just like to. Yes. Um, any questions before we leave? Somebody had a question, but I had to mute you. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't have a question, but I just want to say hi to Alice. Okay. Okay. And have a good evening. Hi, dear. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> Great. You got to see her. Jo, nice to have you. She's. Joan's a living testimony. She's a really living testimony of what's happened to her in such a short month with her, with her health. So you can be a testimony too. Make sure you book that consultation. Have a really good night. And thank no, you. So Carolyn, much. you know what? What's that? The first time I went to um, Cuba, I went to Cayacoca. 
Okay. And um, they use the dry coconut, you know, the dry coconut to line the streets. Each side of the street, they took the dry coconut to line it. And I'm saying for such a poor country, they they could make coconut oil and sell it. But they didn't do that. They use it to line the streets. So yeah. I understand what you're saying. They yeah, need a lot of a knowledge. Disconnect. Just a yes. disconnect of like, it's it's very strange. It was very odd to me, that disconnect. So we went down there to empower and educate and boy, it was incredible. So anyway, we plan to go back. And so thank you. So many of you listening gave monetary and physical donations. Thank you from the depth of my heart. Not a penny was wasted. In fact, we brought back some of the money because... Uh, as generous as we were, you know, we were still frugal with our purchasing and our spending. And now we are going to be sending them in their kitchen because they're always hosting missionaries and people from the village. They are so short kitchen supplies. So we are sending them a package of kitchen supplies with the rest of the money. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you and have a good night. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Bye.